Hello and welcome to this video about playing without a shoulder wrist. Playing with a shoulder wrist or playing without a shoulder wrist is, is something which violinists have been talking about for such a long time, ever since the shoulder wrist was invented. Whether it's better to play with a shoulder wrist or without, very often we have violinists who say it's terrible to use a shoulder wrist and don't ever do that. And then you have other violinists who say, don't play without a shoulder wrist, you have to play with a shoulder wrist. So we have many, many different violinists who play differently and who think that their way of playing is the only way of doing it. I personally play without a shoulder wrist and I've been doing so for many years. I did play with a shoulder wrist for a while because one of my teachers recommended it. I played without a shoulder wrist when I was a child and I went back to play without a shoulder wrist. My reasons for going back to playing without a shoulder wrist is that I always found it easier, probably because I did play without a shoulder wrist as a child. And my other reason was that I wanted my left shoulder to be more free because shoulder and neck is always the place where we violinists get problems and I wanted my shoulder to be free. And my personal biggest motivation for playing without the shoulder wrist is that the violin sounds better because the bottom of the violin can resonate more freely if there's not a shoulder wrist clamping it together. So those are my personal reasons. This video is not about telling you whether you should or should not play without a shoulder wrist. I would recommend playing without a shoulder wrist at least to just try it out for all violinists. Because even if you normally play with a shoulder wrist, which is fine as far as I'm concerned, it's a good idea occasionally to take it off and play without the shoulder wrist just to try it out. You will notice so much about what your thumb does moving around the violin if you play without a shoulder wrist. So for that reason alone, it's very, very much worth just trying it out, playing without a shoulder wrist. If you don't like it, you can go back to playing with a shoulder wrist anytime you like. But this video is about a couple of things which might be interesting for you if you want to play without a shoulder wrist. A couple of things which I'd just like to mention which might help you. Now when you play without a shoulder wrist, your whole body balance changes. So before you start, just feel a little bit of the balance on the floor. You can move from side to side a little bit, just feeling your balance. And then you can move forward and backward a little bit. And then you can move diagonally forward to the right and back to the left. And then forward to the left and back to the right. And one of my personal favorites is to move in a circular motion. in both directions. This gives you a feeling for your body balance. Your body is basically balancing on your feet. And now I'd like to talk about what the shoulder actually can do. We can pull our shoulder up and back down again. That's this movement. You're just going up and back down again. Do this with both shoulders because both shoulders need this. Just up and back down. This is helpful to know what movements the shoulder can actually do. The shoulder can also move forward and backward. That's best done like this, as if you want to put your hand on the other shoulder, left hand onto the right shoulder like this. That's forward and back. Forward and back. Do that with both, of course, too, because we play the violin with both hands and both shoulders. And the last thing that the shoulder can do is it can turn like this. You make circles also in both directions. Other one as well. And in the other direction. And then very nice is to simultaneously move both shoulders circular 
forwards and the other direction back. These shoulder exercises are very, very good exercises for violinists. Not only do they mobilize our shoulders nicely, but they also remind us of what our shoulders actually can do. Because when we play without the shoulder rest, yes, we do sometimes have to pull the shoulder up. But that's not a problem. Our shoulder can do that. We just have to remember to put it back down again. It's no problem moving the shoulder up and back down. You can also move it up and forward and back down again. The whole point of playing without the shoulder rest is to have a free shoulder. So don't be afraid of pulling it up. There's nothing wrong with just using that joint. Playing without a shoulder rest means that you are balancing the violin most of the time. You do not need to pull your shoulder up and hold the violin with your shoulder very often and also not for any long stretches. Mostly we need to hold the violin with our shoulder when we do shifts down because there's the danger of taking the violin with us. When we do shifts up we don't need to because if anything we're moving the violin towards the neck. So the violin balances on our collarbone and in our hand. So the default position for playing without a shoulder rest is where the shoulder has virtually no contact with the violin, you see? And as is very difficult to see, my chin is also not resting on the chin rest, but it's just touching the chin rest. The difference is this is basically clamping together, the shoulder is holding the violin and my chin is holding the violin. That way I'm completely free here. I don't need my hand for anything, so we need this position. But most of the time we don't. So we drop the shoulder and we lift our chin from the chin rest. I'm not talking about actually lifting the chin because you're moving between holding the violin and not holding it all the time. So you don't want your chin to be far away. It can touch the chin wrist, just don't clamp the violin together. And this is your default position without holding the violin with your chin and shoulder. You're just balancing it on your collarbone and on your hand. <laughs> The whole scale up, I don't need my shoulder for anything. Down, I'll need it. Here, I needed it. I'll show you from the other side. So you only bring your shoulder up just when you need it and you drop it again as soon as you don't. You'll notice when you need it. That's when you need it, when you have large shifts going down, which you're doing with your whole hand. If you do the shifts just with your fingers, keeping your thumb in one position, then as you see, you could lift your chin and your shoulder doesn't have to touch the violin. It's mostly large shifts between third and first position where we do use a whole arm. That's when we need to hold the violin so we don't take it with us. So if you're playing the pieces which you normally play, just balancing the violin, then you will notice the places where you actually need your shoulder. And there it's fine to hold the violin with the shoulder, as long as the shoulder goes back down again, as soon as you don't need to hold the violin with shoulder and chin anymore. The best way to practice this is to practice with the chin not being on the chin wrist, just above. This is on the chin wrist, just above, because then you are balancing the violin and then you need to 
hold the violin in your hand. And depending on what piece you're playing, you will quite soon come to the point where there's some shift or some combination where that doesn't work. That's when you can use your shoulder briefly. The advantage of playing without a shoulder rest is that our violin is not quite as fixed. We can move it. And if you've played with the shoulder rest for a while and are taking it off now and playing without, then you need to get used to the positions that you can move your violin because you're not used to that. If you play with a shoulder rest, the violin is in a fixed position. But remember, you can move the violin up and down. It's often very nice to move it up. If you have some high note on the G string, because then the bottom of the violin is nice and free, so you will get a particularly nice sound. So you move the violin up and down. You can move it from side to side. It's quite good to move the hands together and apart again. If you play like that, that was very exaggerated, but you can move the violin towards the bow hand and then open the angle again and then towards the bow hand again and then open the angle. That's very useful when you're playing without a shoulder rest. It's difficult to do this when you're playing with a shoulder rest. The advantage of this is that you have more bow if you move the violin as well a little bit. And the other thing that you can do is you can change the angle of the violin itself, like this. The advantage is that if you're playing on the G string, if you move the G string towards the bow a little bit, that makes it easier for the right hand. It doesn't have to go so far. So if I'm playing here, if I move the violin towards the bow a little bit, that will also sound better because when we play on the G string, we want our bow to be as far away from the D string as possible because that will make the G string sound better. Of course if we have string crossings we need to be close to the next string obviously but if we're just playing on the G string we want the bow to be further away and changing the angle of the violin again makes the bottom of the violin able to resonate freely. So those are the ways that one can move the violin and it's a good idea to play around with them quite a lot just to get used to how much you can move the violin when you're playing without the shoulder rest. It's quite fun and although I'm not a great fan of people who move around a lot on stage, this is from the point of view of somebody in the audience, I prefer it when people don't move too much, but it's good to be able to move and it's necessary to have the movements which come naturally because as soon as we tense up and put ourselves into some kind of a frame, then sound won't really be possible because we want free resonating sound. And since our body is part of the instrument, we must always think of our body as being part of the instrument. We don't want to be stiff or fixed anywhere. We want the sound to be able to also travel through our body, just like it travels through the instrument without any fixed positions blocking it anywhere. So that's why it's good to be able to move in many directions and at first I would actually advise you to move a lot just to get used to it and try it out. Most will come naturally and try to play balancing the violin as much as you can and hold it with shoulder and chin only in the places which is absolutely necessary. Okay, I hope you find this interesting and helpful and as always let me know if you have any questions.